Hey guys, so, well it's Sunday, and so this is an update on my aunt's trimmer, which it's a Echo SRM 2100. As you see, right there, SRM 2100, because there's supposed to be a, a label right here, a model label right here, but there's not one. But, however, I did order one. This is the trimmer that uh, got replaced by the SRM210, and then the SRM210 got replaced by the SRM225, which is what I have. Okay, so for the update, as you can tell, I have did some work on it. I've got it all cleaned up. It was very, very dirty once I had all of this apart. All of this was just all caked up with dirt. So yeah, I had the starter off. So all of this back here, it's all nice and clean. And I also took the muffler off too. The muffler wasn't too awfully bad. And also to check if, if the spark arrestor screen, how it looked. But actually, there was actually no spark arrestor screen. My aunt must have had the spark arrestor screen removed uh, years ago since she's had the trimmer. So, it's nice and clean now. Got this all clean too. I actually took the pressure washer to all this last night just once I had got home from my aunt's place. Now it looks a lot better now. And here's all the the other stuff. The spring however is not too bad. I was gonna try to to salvage it but I was just having a hard time trying to get it to rewound and try to get it back into the starter housing and I just wasn't having too much luck and and besides that, I nearly uh, cut my finger right there. And so, I didn't want to mess around with it anymore. Didn't want to try to keep cutting myself. And so I decided to just get a brand new spring. And here's a better look at the grommet here. Hell cracked it all is the rubber fuel lines here are not very stiff they still feel pretty soft now the this one here for the primer it's pretty hard and so this time I just ordered a, a fuel grommet instead of just getting an actual fuel line kit where it has all the fuel lines all on the grommet that would look just like this. I think if you were to get one, I think the part number for it would be 90097, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what the part number is. Got the gas tank off, got the outside of it all nice and clean, and the inside of it was all clean too. Got the air filter cover all clean as best as I can get it. And that's that's all clean and I got the carburetor all cleaned up too I actually uh, put this in a little glass jar that I keep out here and I filled it up with gas and I dropped this carburetor in and it actually got all the dirt off and got it all nice and clean really good I did a little quick checkup on the carburetor it all looked pretty clean on the inside. So just to uh, uh, just to prevent any just for preventative maintenance is what I'm just trying to say. Try to get it out of my mouth. Just for preventative maintenance, I'm going to get a, a partial uh, carburetor kit that'll only have just the diaphragms and the gaskets only, since 
everything else on the carburetor looks okay. I'll just put in new diaphragms and gaskets and hopefully just to make this carburetor trouble free. There we go, that's exactly what I was just going to say. <laughs> And also, I am going to replace this primer bowl. Now it's not too bad, it, it's not cracked or anything, but it had been replaced before. But again, just for a preventative maintenance, I'm just going to get a, a new primer bowl as well. And this is another Zama. C1U series carburetors, which I really like these carburetors. These are definitely reliable carburetors. The model number on this one is a K52. This is kind of similar to on that HC1500 hedge trimmer that I had rebuilt last year uh, for my grandfather. So these are definitely good carburetors, by the way. The main reason why is because of the adjustment screws. And yep, and I got the starter housing, the inside of it, it's all cleaned up really well. It was just all dirty and filthy. And so I, I actually did have to take the spring out. And besides the spring wasn't quite put in properly anyways because the end of it wasn't on this little uh, clip right here where you put the end of the spring at. It was, I don't know exactly on where it was connected before and I was surprised it actually held on there. I went ahead and uh, just got the new rope put on and only just tied a knot just only on the pulley, not quite on the handle yet. I just have the handle right through it just so that way I won't be able to lose the handle until I get my new spring. And so yeah, so this is pretty much all I can do for it now. And I've already ordered all those parts. I also did order a a tune-up kit which would come with a an air filter, spark plug, and fuel filter. And let's, the plug that's in this trimmer, if I can pull this out, here we go. It's a NGK BPM 7A which I think it originally calls for a NGK BPM 7Y which that's what it'll have in the tune-up kit. And so I've already got the stuff all ordered. They should probably come in the next few days. And I probably won't get back at working on this probably until next weekend. And then I'll probably, shortly after I get it fixed, I'll probably go back to my aunt's place and give it back to her just so that way she'll have a a working uh, string trimmer and since now that she's got the the DR trimmer mower I want her to at least have a a working handheld trimmer as well just to use it just around the areas of the house over there and so cool and I will get a video on possibly getting this all put back together and getting it running again. And even though it did, surprisingly, that it was still running, though, just running good. But I think that the idle on the carburetor, the idle was probably just too slow. And so, cool. Alright, so uh, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And so, thanks for watching.